So one thing that I think is very important to bring up with um, campaigns like yours, because we're seeing this become, uh, becoming an increasingly popular uh, method, is to not accept corporate money. So you are running and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because your opponent, Joe Crowley, he's accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars from large multinational corporations from special interests but you are choosing to run uh just on grassroots donations you don't have a super PAC so can you explain to me why you think that even though you're disadvantaging yourself here why it's so important to not take corporate money Absolutely, because today in America, we are not at a lack of ideas. We do, Our problems don't come from a lack of ideas. Our, problem, our problems don't come from a lack of ability or capacity. Our problems come from a lack of political will. And that lack of political will comes from the corrupting influence of money in politics. It is very hard to run a campaign on small dollar donations. And in fact, running a campaign on small dollar donations basically forces you to put your inherent faith in people, put your inherent faith in your constituency. And um, most, most of our incumbents in Congress today don't have that. They don't have that faith in people to fund their campaigns. And so they turn to Wall Street and corporations to finance their political careers. But what happens in that initial compromise in the and the way you run for office is the way that you really inhabit that office. I know we talk about, you know, that you campaign in, in poetry and you govern in prose, but really the ideals that with which one and with which an, a candidate runs are the same ideals and should be consistent with the way that they govern. And so if you are running a Wall Street backed campaign, you're going to be having a Wall Street backed uh, tenure in Congress. And so even though it's harder, even though we're technically at a monetary disadvantage, where we have an enormous advantage is in people power, we will have, we already have volunteers on the ground riled up and ready to go. And that just doesn't happen with my opponent who was actually appointed to office 20 years ago and never challenged since. He was never formally elected to office. The district is 70% people of color and we have never had a person of color represent us in American history. We have got the people on our side. We have got the will on our side. And just because we're not rolling in Wall Street money doesn't mean that we don't have a chance. We do. I'm, I'm a working person, but that is the way our government was designed to work. This is the spirit of the Constitution that established the nation and the governance with which we we per, which persists today. And so the big thing is that I seek to govern with the spirit of the law, not just by the not just by the letter of the law. So I think that that's extremely important and that the political will to refuse small to refuse large donations is the same political will with which I, I will pursue Medicare for all campaign finance reform, a renewable energy economy by 2028. It takes guts, but that guts is what we need in Washington right now. Everyone is so scared to say no to Wall Street that people, everyday working people are suffering because of it. For what? There is no rational reason why with why our government should be acting to take away our health care and strip our educational options. We need the moonshots, you know, that's that's where we are right now. We need to be focusing on on switching to a renewable energy. We need to be focusing on going to Mars. We need to be focusing on making sure that every man, woman and child has the capacity to choose the life that they want to choose without being worried about whether they have a corporate insurance policy or whether they can afford a deductible or a premium. I think that you would probably agree that, you know, once you take this money, even if you may run initially with good intentions, that money, it over time, it's very corrupting. It it changes the way that you view the world. The people who you hang around with, you know, lobbyists from Wall Street, they really tend to change the way that you view, view not just the world, but policy as well. So what do you think the solution would be? Because there's not going to be everyone as, you know, Everyone won't be as courageous as you and Justice Democrats and brand new Congress to not take corporate money. So what do you think the long term solution is legislatively in order to get money out of politics? What would you support? We need to we need to either pass a, a constitutional amendment or we need to take Citizens United back to the Supreme Court. Um, this is the 
this is the heart of the issue. Citizens United that says, that basically says money is speech. Money is not speech, money is commerce. And commerce is one of the central tenets that need to be reg, that is deemed regulated regulated a ball in the United States Constitution. Um, commerce is what is needs does need to be regulated. There's a reason the founding fathers stated that Congress has the ability to regulate commerce. And the idea that money is speech, that that a thousand dollar check is somehow in the same realm as a protest is laughable. The notion is laughable. And we're seeing the results. You know, we're seeing the results of of Citizens United, we're seeing how, how in the 2016, you know, uh, in the in the elections, the majority of Americans were disappointed with both of their general election options, and the the reason is because they know that the majority of Congress doesn't have them number one in mind. My my opponent, he just recently did a fundraiser, and the only option to attend was a two thousand five hundred dollar ticket. That's, you know, that is percentage points of, um, that is multiple percentage points of my district's av average annual income. We need to, we need, and moreover, it's also a time issue. When you're spending so much money raising big dollar donations, you are not spending time with your community, with your constituents, but in listening to them, it's, 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 it is a threat. It is an existential threat to our democracy. And it either either by proposing and supporting a constitutional amendment, which I absolutely will legislatively, um, we also need to look at how we pursue this in the courts as well and whether um, the Supreme Court, you know, would consider overturning this decision. Obviously, with recent appointments, that's become less likely. But um, it is still possible. And when it comes to something like public financing of elections, would you support something like that as well? Yeah, we in New York City, our citywide elections, we actually have public financing. And it's been incredible for the city. In New York City, if you want to run for office, the city will give you six to one matching donations. For every wow. donation under $175 you receive, the city will match that donation six times. And what have we seen as a result? A boon of progressive candidates and progressive policies that have been enacted in New York City. In New York City, we have universal pre-K education. In New York City, we just recently passed um, $15 minimum wage. And if we had more public financing of elections, I guarantee that those policies would become more widespread across the nation. Because now, all these New York City has city council elections happening right now, and those city council candidates are going to everyday people because they're, you know, in a cynical way, they're it, it, it's not even um, a choice of political will or courage, but it's incentivized. It's actually financially incentivized to go after small dollar donations because you will get that six to one matching. I think public financing is a fantastic idea, and it's justified as well, considering that. Elections is, you know, the most basic foundational elections and voting are some of the most basic foundational uh, democratic acts. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.